know me by my habit. Well, then, I know thee. What shall I know of thee? My master's mind. Unfold it. Thus says my king. Say thou to Harry of England, though he seemed dead, we did but slumber. Tell him we could have rebuked him at Harfleur, but that we thought not good to bruise an injury till it were full ripe. Now we speak upon our cue, and our voice is imperial. England shall repent his folly, see his weakness, and admire our sufferance. Bid him, therefore, consider of his ransom, which must proportion the losses we have borne, the subjects we have lost, the disgrace we have digested. For our losses, his exchequer is too poor. For the effusion of our blood, the master of his kingdom, too faint a number. And for our disgrace, his own person, kneeling at our feet, but a weak and worthless satisfaction. To this, add defiance. And tell him for conclusion, he hath betrayed his followers whose condemnation is pronounced. So far, my king and master, so much my office. What is thy name? I know thy quality. Mount Joy. Thou dost thy office fairly. Turn thee back and tell thy king I do not seek him now, but could be willing to march on to Callis without impeachment. For to say the sooth, my people are with sickness much enfeebled. My numbers lessened. Go, therefore, tell thy master, here I am. My ransom is this frail and worthless body. My army but a weak and sickly guard. Yet, God before, tell him we will come on, though France herself and such another neighbor stood in our way. If we may pass, we will. If we be hindered, we shall your tawny ground with your red blood discolor. And so, Mount Joy, fare you well. We would not seek a battle as we are. Nor as we are, we say we will not shun it. So tell your master. I shall deliver so. That's for thy labor, Mountjoy. Thanks to your highness. March to the bridge. The bridge! It now draws toward night. Beyond the river, we'll encamp ourselves. And on the morrow, bid them march away.